The world is bracing for an apocalyptic future, Michael Snyder reports. When you imagine our collective future, what do you see? Today, most people do not envision a positive future for humanity. Our movies, our television shows, our video games, and our talk shows are filled with apocalyptic themes, and there is constant speculation about what's ahead of us on social media. Global events have already started to go haywire in recent months, and faith in our leaders has been, never been lower. A lot of people are realizing that when things really start hitting the fan, nobody's going to come riding along to rescue them. So sales of emergency food and supplies have soared to record levels, and millions of us are planning for life in a world that has gone completely and utterly mad. Even some of the most prominent voices in our society are openly talking about such things. For example, Joe Rogan has suggested that right now would be a really good time for Jesus to come back. He said, like, if he came back now, it would be great. Rogan said, Jesus, if you're thinking about coming back, now's a good time. Now is, now's a good time. Have you ever heard Joe Rogan talk like this? I haven't. In another recent podcast, Joe Rogan admitted that he believes that something big is coming, and when he thinks about that, it scares him. Needless to say, he is far from alone. There are millions of others out there that are feeling the exact same way. At this point, even the wealthiest members of our society are preparing for worst-case scenarios. The following comes from a Daily Star article entitled, Bible Prophecy is Coming True, as claims billionaires build huge underground bunkers. Podcaster Christina Randall claims that Zuckerberg's bunker is just the latest of around 15 doomsday shelters being built by billionaires around the globe. She said, it's definitely very interesting that they're choosing to build something that sounds like it could be fully self-sustaining, especially if something catastrophic happens to the world and it was no longer habitable. Why not just build a regular old mansion or some kind of commercial facility that could generate Zuckerberg even more money? She stressed, this building is definitely not cheap. It's estimated to cost over $270 million, and it looks like this is going to be the largest private personal construction project in human history. We're talking about a quarter of a billion dollars. And the video from Christina Randall that was re referencing the article has already been watched more than 420,000 times. You, have, you can find it here. If everything is going to be just fine, why are so many billionaires building massive survivalist compounds? Can anyone out there answer that question? A very large portion of the general population is deeply concerned about what's coming as well. Billions of dollars is being spent on emergency food and supplies, and I fully expect that 2024 will shatter all previous records. In a recent Fox Business article entitled, Army Vet Says Prepper Food Company Booming as More Americans Plan for Disaster in 2024, Jason Nelson explained why it's so important for people to have plenty of emergency food on hand. Americans need to consider the vulnerability of the U.S. food supply and make plans accordingly, Nelson argues. He says, I think that a lot of people don't know where food comes from. They don't understand the distribution system. If they understood how that works, that there's about two weeks worth of food in any distribution system around the United States, once those systems start to break down, the availability of food is going to drop to net zero, to near zero. And so what people think they have in their cabinets that will help them survive is very different than actually sitting down and doing an analysis of caloric intake for your family, what they need for not just survivability, but maybe even thrivability, he said. What he said is so true. Once our distribution systems break down, the stores will empty out very rapidly. And when that day arrives, you will be so glad that you took action ahead of time. The same thing could be said for those who have already chosen to relocate. Over the past few years, many Americans have actually moved to a different part of the country in anticipation of the very challenging times that are ahead of us. In a recent article, Milan Adams said, out, laid out some of the things that you might want to consider if you're thinking about making such a move. Here are some of the human factors that she considers to be important when evaluating a new location. 
low population density, 40 people per square mile or less, distance to major or minor cities 50 plus miles away, distance to military base 50 plus miles away, distance to nuclear power plants 100 plus miles away, distance to interstate highways, low poverty rate, low criminal uh, violent crime rate. And here are some of the natural factors that she considers to be important when you're valuing a new location. Easy access to fresh water, abundance of wild game, low natural disaster risk, dense forest cover, adequate soil textures, adequate rainfall, low drought risk. I think that all of that is really good advice. When things start getting really crazy, you don't want to find yourself trapped in a heavily populated area. As I discussed earlier this week, social order is already breaking down all over the nation. For example, did you know that 90,000 packages a day are still in New York City? I was floored when I first heard that statistic. It means that there are 90,000 crimes in Big Apple every single day. Our streets are literally teeming with predators and many of them show absolutely no remorse for what they're doing. When I was young, I thought that laying, lie, living in a big city was the thing to do. But now that I'm much older, I'm so glad I did not live in one of our core urban areas because they have become extremely dangerous. Over the weekend, uh, young people in San Francisco vandalized automobiles. And why did they do that? Because they could. They couldn't care less about property rights. They just saw something that they could destroy, so they did, it. they did that. If this is how they are behaving now, what will they do? What will they be like when there's no food in their stomachs and they haven't eaten for two weeks? The elite definitely want to avoid such confrontations, and so that is why they plan to bug out and go to the survivalist compounds that they have been constructing for themselves. We really are on the verge of an extremely apocalyptic future, and we'll soon see things happen that many people never even imagined would be possible. Millions upon millions of people have a gut feeling that really bad stuff is on the horizon and it won't be too long before it becomes clear why so many of us have been preparing for the worst. This is by Michael Snyder on End of the American Dream. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. And this is by Michael Snyder. He says about the author, my name is Michael. Michael Snyder, extremely controversial new book entitled Chaos, available on paperback and for Kindle on Amazon. He's also written seven other books that are available on Amazon, including End Times, Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life That Really Matters, Commissions Earned. When you purchase any of Michael's books, you help to support the work that he's doing. You can also get his articles by email as soon as he publishes them by subscribing to his Substack newsletter. Michael has published thousands of articles on Economic Collapse blog and of the American Dream Most Important News, and he always freely and happily allows others to republish his articles on their own websites. You can connect with Michael on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and sharing his articles on your own social media accounts is definitely a great job, great help. These are such troubled times that people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, we strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. I finally support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.